Hi guys, my name is Pun, if you don't know me, and welcome to another book video. In this one, I'm trying to achieve my Goodreads goal. I'm filming this intro in the future, so there will be some clips in here that's already happened. Today is currently December 1st, and we have 40 of 50 more books to go. It shows I am five books behind schedule. Of course, <laughs> what's new? But anyways, it's December 1st, so we have to read 10 books before the end of the month, which I think I can do that, right? Right. If you have a Goodreads goal you're trying to complete, also join, join the group. <laughs> so let's complete our goal together and get to reading. So I've been reading this book. Oh my goodness. It is it is so good. Like it has been so good so far. I've made some predictions in here like just trying to guess how it's gonna go. I've been really enjoying reading this so far. So it's about these two women and they first meet when they're both out on their birthdays and they, they have the same birthdays, they're born at the same hospital. So one of them, Alex, is a podcaster and the other one, Josie, she's like a stay at home mom and, and Josie convinces um, Alex to do a podcast on her and things just start happening. We start learning these details, like Josie has a crazy life. I don't wanna to give too much away, but Josie and Alex meet on the birthdays and Josie convinces Alex to do a podcast on her because Alex has a well-known podcast that she's been doing. I'm like a little bit more than halfway done with this book. And I just have, I have my guesses. And if I'm right, I don't know, but I hope, I hope I don't guess it because it's always fun to not get and like figure out the whole plot, you know. Josie is, mm, I don't like her. Josie definitely has a lot going on. I'm just going to put it that way. And Alex, this just goes to show you never really know what is going on in people's lives, right? <laughs> this is gonna be a little bit of a spoiler. I'll put the skip ahead time, but I just have to say that Josie is nuts like i knew it i knew her little innocent innocent act is is not fooling me okay like i knew it like from the get-go she was putting off like such weird unstable vibes you know like i mean it makes the story interesting but in real life yeah it would happen in real life but like i already have my guesses on on what's going to happen out and i hope i'm proven wrong because mm, i do not like josie no because listen to this it says so today she will sit in the cafe and she will eat a panini and she will live another fragment of her life and she will try to feel normal to feel like the alex of six weeks ago the alex who hadn't met josie fair Girl, same. <laughs> same. Now, I know she did not kill that girl. Mm -mm -mm. This book 
is crazy. <laughs> is that? It's quick pace. The chapters are relatively short, so it's easy to just fly through this book because you're like, oh, one more chapter, and then you're like halfway through the book. I stayed up reading a pretty good bit of this last night. So I only have this much left in the book. And it's been crazy, crazy good. chapter so let's see how this wraps up I've finished none of this is true by Lisa Jewell and oh my goodness I pretty much guess everything that happened in this book except for one thing that was revealed at the very end I had fun reading this book the chapters were short so it was easy to just read and fly through them so I would give this three and a half or four out of five stars it was a fun read it kept me interested i was never bored it kept me wanting to read and find out like what is going on in this woman's crazy life so yeah another book down so where's my phone okay so i am at 39 out of 50 books so i'm 78 percent into my goal and i'm five books behind schedule 11 more books to go before we complete our goodreads goal of 50 books the game become the falcon, the falcon become the man, and man in his turn the desert. It's what turns lead into gold and makes the gold return to the earth. The alchemist smiled. The wind has many names. In that part of the world, it was called the Sirocco, because it brought moisture from the oceans to the east. In the distant land the boy came from, they called it the Levanta. Okay, so I have about 30 minutes left in this book, and it's, it's pretty good so far. I'm enjoying it. So it's about this guy or this kid that decides to become a shepherd because he wanted to explore the world and travel and see new places and not be stuck in his little village but then he's been having these dreams of um, finding treasure and all this stuff so he goes to see this woman and she's a dream reader and she tells him that he needs to go to the pyramids in Egypt. One day he's sitting on a bench reading a book and this uh, old man approaches him and starts talking to him and tells him like, yeah, go out there, find your treasure. So he decides to sell his flock so he can have money to travel. The story just follows his journey as he tries to get to the pyramids of Egypt and it just talks about the lessons he learns along the way and the people that he meets. It's a pretty interesting little whimsical little read. It's like a story with moral lessons. The illustrations, are you kidding? The book is getting so good and I'm almost, I'm about the 45% mark. Hi guys, so I finished listening to the audiobook of The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Paul, I hope I'm saying that his name right, but it was only about four hours long and I liked it pretty good. It had some good moral lessons in there. I think this description says it best. Combining magic, mysticism, wisdom, and wonder into an 
inspiring tale of self-discovery. It was a nice relaxing little listen on my drives so that's good if you're looking for a relaxing audiobook with some with some lessons in it. It's a good one to listen to because it's only about four hours long. So the narrator for this book is Jeremy Irons and if you don't know he's the voice actor for for the character Scar in Lion King. So that was pretty cool. That's that. I would give it, I liked it pretty good. So I'd rate it about a three, three and a half. It's got a pretty, pretty mixed reviews on Goodreads. And I think it, it all just depends on your expectations and, and what you're looking for in this book. If you read the description, like you'll know what it's about. But I kind of went in not knowing what this book was about. I was just quickly looking for an audiobook to listen to and I saw it was short and I I've been seeing I've been seeing it everywhere and I've just heard people talking about it so I was like why not give it a listen because it's only four hours pretty short and I don't think I've mentioned or talked about this yet I am also reading this book Starling House by Alex E. Harrow okay so I'm 69 percent into the book yeah i'm enjoying it so far i've been kind of reading it slowly because i've just you know life i'm enjoying it so far my interest got peaked around like the 45 percent mark now like things are happening and going down you know because at the beginning we're following what's her name oh opal okay so this book follows opal and her mom died in a car accident and so she's left with just well all by herself because she don't really have any family besides her brother her younger brother jasper and so it follows how opal navigates all that because they don't have a lot of money so she's like kind of scrapping and trying to care for her younger brother and they live in this old motel she starts working as a housemaid or house cleaner at starling house according to town gossip starling house is like a mystical evil devilish kind of house and so when opal starts working there everyone's like oh watch out whatever and she starts noticing these weird things because she's been having dreams about the house and the warden of the house is Arthur Starling and well he's a character so we see their relationship there but now at about 70% things have happened and we're learning a whole new world. I'm enjoying it so far learning about Opal's story and these characters. The only thing is I don't really feel strongly about the characters. Opal is kind of like rough around the edges and so is, I mean, every every character in this book is kind of rough around the edges, but I guess that makes it, it makes it real. The way she writes Arthur Starling, please. Let me re-describe what Starling House is. It's not like some evil like haunting type of house it's more like weird mystical things happen there i'm just gonna leave it at that and you'll have to read the book to know what i what i mean i like this it says the two of us are a pair of clumsy card players showing our hands to the whole table see look because opal Opal is independent, okay? She does not need a man, and Arthur wants to like help her, okay? And she's like very, she can handle herself. Let's just put it that way. Constable Mayhew, I swear, he is just like a. Oh, Opal is just telling everybody off. I love it. Okay, I take it back. I am rooting for Opal, okay? She's a little rough around the edges, but I am rooting for her and her people. I guess my only complaint with this book so far is that the chapters are pretty long, which might sound silly, but like shorter chapters that are like only five minutes for some reason makes it easier to read because you're like, okay, only one more chapter and 
you keep going, right? But the chapters in this book are like at least, what's the shortest length? Maybe like 12 minutes, but a lot of them are like 20, 20 plus minutes. And that's my only complaint really. Mm -hmm. That is, <laughs> why, what, that is so sad. like this description of Starling House. So this is Opal's point of view. I cross the river and drive to the place where the street lights stop and the woods turn wild, where the only light is the faint amber, amber glimmer of a lit window shining to me through the trees. What is gonna happen? We're getting, I think we're getting to the climax of the story. I don't know. Something is about to go down and we don't know what yet, but Opal, of course, has inserted herself. Okay, so listen to Arthur's description of Opal. She wears the scars well. She's made her life into an act of defiance, a laugh in the dark, a smile with bloody teeth, but he refuses to add even one more. Arthur wakes with a sharp pain in his chest because he knows he'll never have any of those things because the mist is rising and he's out of time. I really like the little illustrations that they have throughout the chapters. Some of them are small like this and some are like the whole page and it's, it's really pretty. What is going to happen? Okay, so I'm 78%. I need to know. Hi guys, excuse my appearance. <laughs> it's been a lazy, lazy weekend day here, but I have finished Starling House by Alex E. Harrow and I give it a four out of five stars. I like the story. It was well written. There was a bit of setup at the beginning, which is understandable, but it picked up about halfway through the book and things started happening and it became interesting. I liked the ending. It brought it around. The book as a whole is good. Um, will it stick with me? Probably not, but I really like the story and it was very well written. I think four stars is pretty good. Just to talk a little bit about this book, I don't know if, if, if I mentioned it earlier, but this follows Opal. She's 23 years old and she has a younger brother, Jasper. He's about I think 16 and their mom died in a car accident so we follow you know Opal's life and they were brought up just scrapping and roughing it and they live in a rundown motel and then we have Arthur Starling and he's the warden of Starling House so he pretty much just protects the house, among other things, which you'll have to read to find out. And there's also a few other characters that kind of make an appearance in this book, just to add to the story. But overall, it was a it was a decent, decent story. I am going to end off the video here, but I hope you've been enjoying my book videos because I am trying to achieve my Goodreads goal, so I've been reading a lot more. I hope you'll stick around and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!